Procrastination. We have all been there and we all do it. Here are some ways how to break through and put an end to procrastination. Let's say you need to finish reading five books and write a literature review in three weeks. The hardest thing is to start. It's the blank page that is the most paralyzing. This video presents the science behind procrastination and six ways to stop it. Stay tuned until the end of the video to make sure you grab my Kill Procrastination Guide. Number 1. Forgive yourself. Procrastination is a common human experience. Already the ancient Greeks had a word for it – akrasia. We are all plagued by it to different degrees. Procrastination is ingrained in us because our brain is primed to avoid pain and move towards instant gratification. So, be kind to yourself, understand that procrastination is not a flaw, it's not a form of laziness or a sign that you have zero willpower or self-discipline. It often serves as a coping mechanism for stress. According to Timothy Pitchell, a renowned psychology professor who has been studying procrastination for more than 20 years, what drives procrastination is not avoiding work, it's avoiding stress. It is a subconscious desire to feel good right now, so that you can feel stress relief. For instance, when we experience stress related to finance, career, health or relationship, our mental energy is drained and we have difficulties focusing on the task at hand. We don't deliberately procrastinate, we do it because we are stressed out. Procrastination is comparable to emotional eating, but for the mind. We avoid tasks that feel hard, and by doing this, we get some sense of relief or comfort as a reward. Unfortunately, the long-term effects of procrastination can result in feeling even more stressed. According to research, the first thing we need to do is to forgive ourselves for any prior procrastination. Studies show that students who forgave themselves for procrastinating are less likely to repeat it on their next test. When you are compassionate to yourself, you are more likely to finish your tasks in the future. Part of the problem is being in a vicious cycle. Procrastinate first and then beat yourself up, being hard on yourself, which in turn increases the likelihood that you will continue to procrastinate because you feel mentally and emotionally drained. There is no reason to feel shame and guilt. Remind yourself it's a very common human condition and you are learning to understand and overcome it. No one taught us anything about procrastination. When I look back, not a single subject in school or university would explain the basics of productivity, effective learning habits or the psychological mechanisms behind procrastination. No wonder I ended up doing it wrong and then beating myself up for many years. Number 2. Keep your tasks bite-sized. An excellent way to beat procrastination is by breaking down tasks into smaller steps. This goes back to Pierce Dale's theory, according to which the procrastination equation looks like the following. Expectancy – the belief that you can complete the task. Times value – the reward or benefit that completing this task offers you, divided by impulsiveness – likelihood of you getting distracted. Times delay – how long you'll have to wait to get the reward. So, when we reduce the size and complexity of the next concrete step, not only do we increase the expectancy to succeed, but it also calms our brain and makes approaching the task easier and more manageable. We often imagine tasks to be harder and more challenging than they are. Have you ever had an experience of procrastinating doing on something for weeks and then you just did it in like half an hour? I certainly have. Let me know in the comments below what tasks do you usually procrastinate on. Number 3. You do not have to feel motivated to get started. Research shows that action often comes first and motivation comes second, meaning that feelings 
follow the action. Studies illustrate that the way we feel about a task changes within two to five minutes after we start doing it. That is why if you start working on something, in most cases you will continue, even after the intended period. As Professor Timothy Pichel puts it, ease up on the conception that our feeling or motivational state needs to match the action at hand. The Ziganik effect, named after psychologist Bluma Ziganik, could serve as another explanation for this tendency. According to this theory, people remember unfinished or interrupted tasks better than completed ones. So, start somewhere, anywhere, and you will have an open loop, which means that you are more likely to finish the task and close that loop since it's the way our brain works. This brings us to point number four. Just start. The hardest thing is to start. In essence, it's not doing the work that's hard, but starting the work. And here is when the Pomodoro technique comes into play. It gives you the initial push. Just set a timer for 25 minutes and start working. You will see that it creates a sense of urgency and boosts your reward system. Every time you accomplish your Pomodoro task, dopamine is released. The more dopamine we have in the system, the less likely we are to procrastinate. We perform our best when we feel our best. In addition, science has shown that dopamine tightens our focus and makes learning easier and faster. This way, you don't have to study for 8 hours straight, but for 25 minutes at a time, which makes the task less daunting. Besides, as you already know, telling yourself to study for the whole day won't work. Think of all distractions and excuses you will come up with. Whenever you feel overwhelmed, you haven't broken down the task into small enough steps. You have to end up with mini steps, microscopic components, so the feeling of accomplishment is not far away. This way, you don't face an enormous project, but rather view it as a series of steps to take from point A to point B in a certain number of 25-minute sessions. Let me give you an example. You have a writing project of roughly 50 pages. The way you approach it is to write multiple paragraphs of 100 or 200 words. Sounds more doable, right? Especially using Pomodoro sessions of only 25 minutes. Now, when you are not intimidated anymore and you know that your task is to write one paragraph, you begin your timer and start typing. One paragraph after another, and soon you have a paper or even a book, depending on your project. A book consists of paragraphs and words in the end, right? Remember, procrastination feeds off inertia, and through these small steps, short pomodoros, and lots of dopamine, you gain magical momentum and the total opposite of inertia. Apart from this, we often decide what we do next based on what we have finished. Number five, create a productive environment. A famous equation by psychologist Kurt Levin says that behavior is a function of the person in their environment. You might believe that you control the majority of your choices, but in reality, our actions are shaped by the environment. It is like an invisible hand that determines human behavior. For example, from marketing research, we know that people often choose products in the shops, not because of what they are, but because of where they are placed. This partly happens because the most powerful of all human sensory abilities is vision. Out of 11 million sensory receptors, 10 million are related to sight. No wonder that what we see affects us. And this is when environment design comes into the picture. Knowing its effect on our behavior, we should put a lot of effort into designing our workplace. This way, you can save willpower and energy by making positive changes to your environment. For instance, if you want to work on a project, remove all distractions and make it as difficult as possible to get distracted. Close all unrelated tabs, emails, turn off notifications, use do not disturb mode on your phone. It is a human nature to follow the law of least effort 
as the brain is wired to preserve energy. It's easier to avoid temptation than resist it. We know from countless experiments that making an option the default will increase the likelihood of it being chosen. So let this tendency work in your favor. It would also be a great idea to follow the principle one space, one use, recommended by James Clear in his book Atomic Habits. This way, you will program your mind to expect and perform certain activities in a certain location. Try to study only at your work desk, but check your phone only when you are sitting on the sofa. This way, your brain will know what to expect where and will build productive habits along the way. But of course, each of us thrives in a different environment, as the same goes, the same water that softens the potato hardens the egg. Some produce their best work in complete silence, and others need a constant buzz to get creative and go to a coffee shop. Some like to take their time to think, and others prefer to work in a very dynamic environment. Observe yourself, become aware of your work style, and design environment accordingly. Number 6. Kill perfectionism. Procrastination is often a symptom of perfectionism. We are afraid that we won't be able to complete a task perfectly and postpone it for as long as possible. This stems from the fear that we are unworthy if we don't meet our goals. Realize and come to terms with the notion that your performance does not equal your worth. According to the self-worth theory of achievement motivation, we all have a predominant psychological need to be seen by ourselves and others as competent, for example, as an excellent writer or A student. Unfortunately, many of us equate our performance with our sense of self-worth. This, of course, puts a lot of pressure on us if we think that the grade we get at an exam decides our self-worth. Such a pattern of thinking is detrimental, and that's when we become fearful of failure and start procrastinating. We try to protect ourselves. On the one hand, we want to succeed, but on the other, we are motivated to avoid failure at almost any cost. In most cases, we end up in situations where we can't force ourselves to sit down and start studying until the very last moment. This provides you with an excuse that you only had 4 hours to study for an exam and that's why your grade is not so high. Or that you had only one day in the end to write that essay and you are happy to have barely passed it given the circumstances. To counteract this tendency, the first step is to become aware of it and observe your feelings. Next, remind yourself that in no way is your self-worth dependent on any assignment or project. Also, try to tune in into your why and think about all the rewards that come from doing the activity. Ask yourself how would your life unfold if you followed through. Most importantly, talk to yourself kindly, as you would talk to a friend. I like to ask myself in such situations, what's the next best thing I can do? I remind myself that I have been procrastinating for decades and no wonder that it's deeply ingrained in me and I need to stay alert and be patient with myself. You could also apply a rule of thinking in terms of 10-10-10, which I learned from the book Finish What You Start by Peter Hollins. Ask yourself how you will feel in 10 minutes, 10 hours, and 10 days from now. This is a very powerful technique because it forces you to think about your future self and to see what effect your actions in the present are going to have on your future. So here is your action plan next time you find yourself procrastinating. Notice when you're struggling, remind yourself that this is human, forgive, Offer yourself a new perspective by remembering all the benefits that come from doing the activity. Bring into memory three things that you've done in the past that seemed hard first, but you did them anyway. Switch into a more resourceful state with your body. Pay attention to your posture and breathing. Sit up straight, breathe through your belly. Start a timer and tell yourself, I will do it for the next 25 minutes. That's all I'm gonna do. 
And of course, as with all things in life, the more you practice it, the better you get. In the comments below, share with me which technique you liked most. Also, let me know if you would like me to cover any of the mentioned topics in more detail. You will find the link to my guide how to kill procrastination in the description below. If you found this video helpful, don't procrastinate but hit that like button, share with your friends and be sure to subscribe.